So uh, this is going to be data and information. So the purpose of a database is to take data and turn it into information. That's the purpose. So we've kind of seen where we get the phrase relational databases because we're taking things and putting them into related piles, which we call tables, right? And we've seen how we do that. We kind of create a table and we put fields in it. And then we'll enter records into that table. And we'll fill in information, fill in data for each of those fields for each record. And every table needs to have a unique ID, a field which is a unique ID for each record. So we're taking data and we're turning it into information. That's the purpose. There's no filing cabinet in here. Some classrooms, they still have a filing cabinet. I like that because I could walk over and I could kick it. That's how we used to store data. We get paper and we write information down. And there's all kinds of flaws with that system. It takes a while to write the information out down. There's no way to validate the data. What I mean by validate Make sure it's the right data that we're putting in. Let me give you an example. I worked when I was in grad school, 1996, 1997 at Fresno State. I worked at the Real Estate Land Use Institute, RELUI, with a gentleman by the name of Don Lopez. Don Lopez is now the Vice President of Instruction here at Fresno City College. He's number two person on class, on campus. And, uh, we worked at Relui, and so we looked at all the real estate transactions in the greater Fresno County metropolitan area, and we had a database. So we'd say, how many houses sold in Fresno? Let's run that query. Let's ask that question of the database and see how many houses sold in Fresno. Well, we didn't get accurate information at first because some people wrote Fresno. Some people wrote Fresno, capital F. Some people wrote Fres. Some people wrote Fresno, because they typed poorly. The data wasn't validated coming into the database, so somebody didn't build that tool onto the database. But we could have just had a drop-down menu where they have to choose the city and then the same exact data stored every time in the database has been validated. And we're ensuring data integrity. So integrity, if you have integrity as a person, right, it means you are believable. If you say something, people can believe you. Dude, I just heard from Tom that an uh, alien spaceship crashed downtown. It's crazy. We have to get our guns and go to the hills. What are you talking about? I know it sounds crazy, but Tom doesn't lie about anything. Tom's straight up. He has integrity. Okay, let's go. Tom said it. It must be true. Right, Tom? Has, so you want your data, database to have integrity. So the data has integrity. So when you pull it out, you know that that's, that's what's happening. So you need to validate your data so that your data has integrity. Data validation and data integrity. So you can also validate by type your password. Retype your password. They don't match. Right? Like, I want to validate that you know you're entering the right thing. And you can disable command C, command V, so they can't copy and paste the wrong type. They have to actually retype it. Like, those are steps to make sure the data gets validated when you enter it. Because you're taking data and you're turning it into information. The takeaway from this video is the stuff in red. We're learning about data, turning it into information, 
And to have good information, you've got to validate your data, and that will give you data integrity. Those are phrases. These are things people who work with databases think about. Otherwise, what's the point? You know? Like, there ain't no money ball. If your data's off, you just hired the wrong people. <laughs> you know, and your team sucks still. You need good data. I don't know if you've seen that movie or read that book. You need the right data to make the right decisions. If you have the right data, you can make the right decisions. You can make better decisions. This is what it takes to be successful, to having the right information to make the right decisions. Databases allow you to have the right information. So we're storing a bunch of data and we can turn it into information. Just so you could grok what that means, let's say that I was an eye doctor, right? And I'm running a, you know, I study to be a doctor and I, became, I want to help people and I was super fascinated with vision because something in my past, my family, who knows what got me into it. And then I start like a medical practice, and then suddenly it's like I have to know business. We gotta have customers coming in, and there's rent to be paid on the mortgage, and there's salaries to be paid. It's like, well, I just wanna be a doctor. Now you're like, okay, well, well, how, what can we do to increase sales? And if all your records are in a filing cabinet, it's gonna be hard to get information out of that. Well, let's send a postcard to everybody who hasn't been in in the last six months and say, hey, time for your eye checkup. If it's in a filing cabinet, you got to go look at each piece of paper. Nope, let's see, when was July 15th? That was, that was less than six months ago. When was uh, uh, February 12th? Is that six months, February, March, April? Ah, it's going to take you forever. Send a postcard to everybody who hasn't been in the last six months. But with a database, you could say, right, you're tracking when was the last appointment. You could just run a query. You could find everybody who hasn't been in the last six months. And you can like go to MailChimp and you can fire off an email. You can have a drip campaign. You can send postcards. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're, all your bookings are filled up. And you're able to pay wages and pay rent. You took data and you turned it into information. You can't do that with filing cabinets. Super powerful. Databases run the world now. And it's only been the last 30 years. Like databases really, you know, started out in early 70s, like let's find a better way to store data, started to become mainstream business, big business in the 80s, started to become accessible to small business and niche, you know, tech geeks in the 90s, late 90s, boom, e-commerce rev revolution and websites, you know, and people being able to store information online. And then mid-2000, Twitter and Facebook, to the moon, right? And that's like only 13 years ago. It was like brand new. Before that, it was like, oh, let's see, Mr. McCloud, let's pull out your record. Looks like you haven't been in three years. It was on paper. And filing cabinets. All right, so databases take data and turn it into information. You get it? Do you understand how powerful and important this is? This is a skill that you can use to make better decisions, which means you can use it to make money. 